So, I've mentioned a few explorers, now let's look at them more closely. We'll start with the big one, Christopher Columbus. In 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I totally learned that rhyme when I was six but it is so true. Two definitely rhymes with blue and rhymes never lie. However, the cute little rhyme barely begins to tell the true story of Columbus. Oop, and now we are going to find out the rest of the story. Well, some of the rest of the story at least. This should be good. The story begins in the Italian city-state of Genoa where Columbus was born. Except that, maybe it doesn't. There are some people who argue Columbus actually grew up in Spain and not in Italy as most people believe. Whether that is true or not really doesn't matter. What matters is that he grew up very interested in religion. About the age of 20 Columbus was working as a sailor when his ship was attacked by pirates. Everyone in the crew was captured or killed but somehow Columbus escaped. He claims that he swam all the way to Portugal to get away. Some historians think this story is a lie and wonder if perhaps Columbus himself was one of the pirates and just used the story so he wouldn't get in trouble. Whatever the case, he ends up in Portugal where he begins to study maps. He concludes that he can sail west from Europe for about 3,000 miles and then he would hit China. He then tried to convince the king of Portugal to support him and pay for a voyage. It didn't go so well. How much? Only hundred dinars. The color, the texture, it's fit for a king. But not even a king could afford it. Can you imagine the profit from a shipload of this? A shipload, Senor Columbus. It comes across the mountains and deserts from India. India. I've never seen anything like this. No, you won't, this side of Cathay. Did you read of Marco Polo? His trip to the great Khan. Mm -hmm. Cities with roofs of gold. Jeweled trappings for elephants. <laughs> In the east, my little stall would be a poor thing indeed. The map. The details of these shorelines came from Turkish sailors. There is no other map so exact. But surely you have made Kios too large. It is our island. <laughs> what price? Your Genoese. Ducats. Let's see. Eighteen. I should have bargained. Columbus eventually takes his idea to Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain. Though it took two years they finally agreed to finance his voyage. They had a bunch of money available because they had taken the land and wealth of the non-Christians they kicked out of Spain. So, the voyage set off and in only three days the rudder broke on one of the ships. It took two weeks to fix it and head off again. While at sea Columbus kept two different logbooks. In one he recorded the actual miles traveled. He kept this one a secret. The one he showed his crew had much lower numbers. That way if they complained that they hadn't seen land he could say, but we've only gone this far, even though they'd really gone much farther. This little trick helped by some time but eventually the men were too angry to continue. They threatened to take over the ship if he didn't turn back to Spain. Columbus begged them for three more days. Here's what happened. Well, after these notes I'll show you what happened. This is all stuff I already said so I'm going to take a break. Be back in a few.
More than two months have passed since they left home. No sailors in history have yet ventured so far out to sea. Their quest, to cross the uncharted Atlantic for the fabled riches of Asia. Their captain is gambling their lives on a theory, reaching the east by sailing west. No one knows what lies over the horizon. The farther they sail, the less they dream of getting rich, and the more they worry about getting home. With his crew on the brink of mutiny, Christopher Columbus sails off the map. Columbus holds at least one man in his confidence. Diego de Arana, master of arms and cousin of Columbus's mistress. Sixty-eight days out of Spain, Columbus faces mutiny. He pledges to turn back if land is incited in three days. Two days pass. Still, no landfall. Around two o'clock on a moonlit night comes the joyous news. Boldly going where none have dared, Columbus stands on the brink of an earth-shaking discovery. That morning, Columbus discovers America. One small step for man will change the entire world. Claiming the island for Spain, Columbus names it San Salvador, Holy Savior. He believes these are the fabled shores of Asia. Instead, he's landed in a world of trouble. So, Columbus lucked out. On the third night after his promised land was finally found. For most, this is where the story ends but honestly, this is just the beginning. Columbus set up a new colony for Spain on the island and began to look for gold. On one trip out exploring the island he crashed his main ship, the Santa Maria. There was now no way his men could all return to Spain. Columbus decided he'd go back himself and return with more ships and men. The trip was much faster this time but still took months. When he returned to the colony he found all of his men he had left behind were now dead. They had been killed by the natives. Columbus was furious and took out his anger on the natives with great violence. In time, Columbus lost the respect of his men and lost power. He was even thrown in jail by a representative of the Queen. And the best part. The whole time this was going on Columbus believed he was in the East. He had no idea he had discovered America. Oh great, more notes. Well, I'm gonna go have a snack or something. Rodin doesn't pay me enough to say things twice.